Top of the morning, it's the Hood Trucker, and we back on our fitness game. I'm not going to show, I'm not going to do the exercises like we did last time. I mean, you know, we all know the exercises, right? Um, but what I'm going to show is the results. So let me just lay out the plan. Okay, number one, I'm not in that truck anymore. Um, you, you probably can do what I'm doing, you know, from a truck, but it's easy if you're not. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can tell, but my voice is a little scratchy because I'm just uh, getting over, you know, some some bugs that are going around. I don't just like the food bug and whatever else and all these other bugs that got going around. They got a new variant going on all over, all, you know, all the time. So I'm just getting over that, but um, so I've been back on the game though, the fitness game for probably like two weeks now, right? So the first thing I did was, I'm already a member of uh, Planet Fitness. So the first thing I did is I committed to, to um, exercising at least five days a week, okay? So the first week, which was last week, okay, let me back up a little bit. Um, it's probably been a little bit over two weeks because like the first week I went seven days straight. And the reason why I did that was because if you've been sedentary for a while, then you kind of need to get acclimated, right? And not necessarily to the gym, but get acclimated to drinking a liter of water when you get when you wake up. I mean, it's rough. Like, if you're not used to drinking water, it's going to be a little rough. You got to force yourself. Like, it took me a couple of days to really get it to the point where, you know, I can I can finish off uh, a liter of water in the morning. And I'm still not all the way there, but, you know, I try. Like, sometimes, like, uh, I'll wake up and I'll be super thirsty. Like, like this morning, I woke up, I was super thirsty. So, it's got like, it, it, I mean, speaking from my own body, it's a little bit uh, kind. It, it like it takes your body a little bit to get used to doing stuff, right? You get in a habit, <clears throat> and your body also gets in a habit too. So you get in a habit of drinking, you know, uh, of drinking water. Then you know your body says, "Hey, where's the water?" When you wake up in the morning, "Hey, where's the water?" Like it did today. Like where's the water? Like I'm. I'm like kind of thirsty right now, but um, jumping forward a little bit, uh, I'm probably also thirsty because I'm not a Giants fan, <laughs> but I'm, it's the only cup I can find, <clears throat> but I'm drinking black coffee. So here's what we did, right? So we, 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 we made a commitment to, to uh, well, we, I made a commitment to myself. And when I say we, I'm saying it might uh, be beneficial to you if you do the same thing. Because we, because I'm going to tell you about, like I probably started about uh, two plus weeks ago, maybe two weeks and some change. And I'm going to tell you when I started, you know, which is around the holidays, uh, just right around Christmas-ish sometime. Um, and I want to, you know, make sure that I got locked in before I came back and said I'm coming back because, you know, I have came back before and kind of dropped the ball. So I wanted to make sure that I could at least make the commitment and that the other thing was uh, that kind of screwed me up was my schedule in terms of, uh, you know, the trucking stuff. It's a rigorous schedule and all of that. So I'm not really um, going to be in the truck in in the necessarily foreseeable future like uh i don't really know i mean if things happen things happen but uh in, in the foreseeable future at least I'm t i can take a little break and then it's going to be a little easier because i don't necessarily have that trucking thing you know hanging over my head the job um and and so i can kind of like uh make a make some allowances in terms of uh, when I want to put my gym time. So, uh, looking over my day, I found that if I get up early, 
that I can get a lot of my gym stuff in. Yeah, who likes to get up early? I mean, I'm kind of used to it because uh, just of the tr whole trucking deal, but, um, you know, get it out the way, right? That, that's how we're going to do it. I mean, because I can either sleep in a couple extra hours or I can get my <laughs> get myself up and go to the gym and then, you know, make some progress. So I did that two weeks ago, uh, a little over two weeks ago. So we, we started getting the, act, getting the body used to and acclimated to getting up. Now, what happened after that was I got sick, right? And it was like fluish um, a little bit. So that kind of disrupted some things. I'm, I'm leaving a, a lot of stuff out because um, one of the things that also happened, it could have contributed um, to, to, you know, me catching the flu or something was that um, I was doing the gym and then I was doing lift at the same time, lift as in the, the ride sharing thing. So I was doing, doing a little bit of that. So could it contribute? I don't know. But, um, although I didn't stop the, uh, the gym, like actually I did when I got sick, I was like, oh, you know, it was, it was crazy. So I really couldn't go to the gym. So I went seven days, kind of got sick, the holidays, all that stuff kind of got sick. And then I disrupted. So like two or three days in there, I didn't go. Then I got back um, for the second round. I think I made it three days because I was still a little bit of sick, right? And then I'm probably on my second day back. So in the last two weeks, I probably went about 10 times, right? Maybe 10 or 12 times. Um, in that time, though, I got started on my water which I'm, my body is starting to get used to getting water. So what happens and that happens uh, is, you, you know, you kind of start urinating more because now your body's say, hey, okay, we're getting water now. We can release some of this water that we've been holding on to because you do, if you don't drink enough water, you're gonna, your body's going to hold on to water. So your body starts doing that. And then um, you got to work through the soreness. When I, when I went the first day, not really so much on the upper body because I, you know, like in the truck, like I can do push-ups and I can do the towel workout. You've all seen that. Um, but not so much with the legs. And you can, but a 100 squats a day or a 1,000 squats a day or however many when I was doing, depending on, you know, what, what time, what you know, when I was doing it, it it's not going to have the weight. So what I do now is when I do legs, I go in there and do squats. Now, Planet Fitness has those guided uh, bars. So you, you're guided even when you do the bench press, but you can use that same press to do squats. So not exactly, um, you know, free weights, but it's close. And if you don't know how to squat, it'll guide you because uh, basically um, it's the, 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 uh, the bar, the, the guide is not straight up and down. It's kind of like an angle. So when you do your squats or you do your bench, you have to uh, compensate for the angle. So if you're doing squats, you want to, you want to, you want to squat facing the mirror. Um, because now you're kind of like you're squatting in a, in a, in a, in a angled, uh, trajectory so that, um, it's not really taking away. Like you, ha they have those machines. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they're stand up leg press machines. Like they have the ones that you sit down in, right? And then they have the ones that you stand up in. So uh, it's it's kind of like the stand up leg press uh, machine when you do the squats. Now it's a little bit. It's, it's still a little bit different because you got to get used to putting the weight on your shoulders, which. You know, I mean, you, you're using muscles for that, and then you're squatting. Um, I think I think it's a different, better uh, form of legs, uh, kind of old school squats are old school. Um, and then you know, you you can't really do the uh, what do they call the the the, uh, the 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 lifts where they put a bunch of weight on vanity lifts. You can't really do that because. You'll get you'll get hung. Now, the other thing that Planet Fitness has is they have those hooks to where it only allow you to go down so low, which is awesome because now you can you can put a little bit more weight on there. When you get to the point where you want to start putting weight on there, like you know heavier weights, and you don't have to worry about the bar crushing you because you have those stoppers 
and you know it's only gonna let you go down so far anyway so that's a good that's kind of like why i like uh planet fitness especially getting started because it's it's like user friendly and they have those stoppers and you know you can pretty much work out by yourself and don't have to worry about uh getting hurt you might get embarrassed but you're not gonna get hurt <laughs> so uh so we, we started doing that so i got on the squats um and had to work through the soreness that first day i think i did um massively because i you know high school college play football all that i'm used to squatting deadlifting and all that stuff um but you know haven't been doing a lot of squat you know weight assisted squats um so it was it was kind of new and i haven't been in the gym in a long time anyway so it was kind of new uh, and had to work through the soreness initially. So I went super light. Now, what I'm not doing is what you see on, on TV, right? You get in there the first day, you, you know, you get after it and they beat you half to death, um, with, with the workout. And then the next day your sores all, all, you know, all day. Um, and you, you kind of don't want to go back cause you're too, cause you're too sore and they beat you half to death and whatever. Right. That's not, really what you want to do you want to go into the gym and get acclimated towards the gym get 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 you know uh if you don't do nothing but the first few days is get in there and learn uh how the system works go in there and understand especially with planet fitness you go in there they got the spray you got to go in there and spray the stuff down after you're done using the machine um learn how to do the the treadmill learn how to uh um you know stair master i'm gonna tell you like this that stair master is 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 that's what it is right it's it's the be all end all like if you want to get in shape get on that stair master and that, it's just you know stair master not the you know not the elliptical and all of that i don't do none of that because first of all it looks goofy and secondly uh i'm a man and i'm a heterosexual man so i don't get on there and do that but i just think it looks goofy uh so all, all of that, I mean, I, I don't understand, like, why, why people do multiple exercises anyway. Like, I see a dude in there sometimes that go and do a leg press and then do, you know, do have a dumbbell and do these at the same time. I don't understand. Uh, like, if you're in a hurry or something, I get it. But, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, pick a day and do whatever, right? So, um, get on there. Like, Stairmaster, I do that. I mean, look, I, I don't do it on leg day, though, but... I mean, on off leg days, I get in there and get on that Stairmaster because it's going to get your heart rate up and uh, way better than that treadmill. Like, when I'm on a treadmill, I, you know, I crank it up and do a, a high incline, um, but that's still nothing close to that Stairmaster. That's st you want to get it together, get get on that Stairmaster. So, get you know, st start getting acclimated to that because, you know, you're going to get on that Stairmaster that first day and you ain't been in the gym in a long time, or you ain't worked out in a long time, listen, get on there for five minutes. It ain't hurting nobody. And who cares who's looking or whatever. Get on there for five minutes and, and you know, start there. Get on two, three minutes, start there. Get on two, three minutes, start there, and be like, whoo, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to get it together, right? So, and then, um, you know, every other day or something, you know, alternate Stairmaster treadmill because you don't really want to get on the Stairmaster that you did legs, especially in the beginning. Um, so that's why, like, if I'm doing leg day and I have time to get on uh, the, the treadmill, then I'll do the legs and then get on a treadmill and walk and, you know, do some walking, kind of loosen everything up. But, uh, you know, the first, you know, first time out, you don't have to kill yourself. Just get in there and learn the gym. Get in there, get, you know, get your body used to getting up. Like, I'm, I get up at, like, I'm getting up at five, but I found out that, you know, sometimes it takes me a, a while to get out of the house. So I got, I'm getting up at 4 or 4.30-ish. So I have, because <clears throat> I'm about 10 minutes away from the gym. So I get up, you know, 4, 4 4.15, whatever. I crawl out of bed. And then, you know, I go in. I, uh, I get on the toilet first thing and, you know, start, you know, uh, get on the toilet, whatever. Get up, weigh myself. After I get off the toilet, get, on, get up and weigh myself. Now I see what's going on. Now, you know. As of the first day, I think I was between maybe like between 220 and 222, something like that. Uh, I got up this this morning, and I was 213. Pleasantly surprised. Now, this is over probably a two-week-plus period. 
right? So not only am I incorporating the gym, which is, you know, starting out, getting used to it, getting in there or whatever, you know, put, you know, getting your heart rate up and, you know, uh, working on some stuff and, and not really going too hard. Just get in there and get used to get familiarized with yourself in there. Get used to going in there, right? If you go in there and do nothing, at least you're there. Like you could go to the gym, sit down at the, at the patio or whatever, at least you're at the gym. And then, you know, you, cause you know, when you start, when you start in the beginning, sometimes you get up, you go to the, so, I mean, it used to take me 10 minutes to get out the car. Cause I got to pump myself up to get in there. So now it's not nothing. Cause I pull up now, just jumping out of her. I got things to do. Right. So you're working yourself in. Right. So then, <clears throat> um, uh, you, you know, familiarize, you know, with everything and, and stuff. And then, so the other thing, you know, start getting, you know, start getting on the roll, get some days under your belt, stuff like that. Now you want to constantly improve though, right? So you, you not only improve with going into the gym, I tried, trust me, I tried every single possible way that you could, uh, work out and have a terrible diet <laughs> and it doesn't work it does not work you have to change your diet now excuse me changing your diet doesn't mean go in there and eat a bunch of rice cakes go in there and eat a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily want to eat that's not gonna ever work right so if you go in and you know if you're if you've been eating McDonald's every day or you go to Starbucks every day, first of all, you don't really want to drink your calories, and secondly, you want to get away from McDonald's because uh, you know it's a lot of fat, sodium, all that stuff. So and it's just look, it's it's just they make they they make that food to make money, so you can't make food to make money and necessarily have it be healthy too. I mean it's it's just their goal is not to be healthy. Their, their PR is to be healthy, but their goal is to make money. So you got to understand that. They got so, mad scientists in there working to make food taste good, and they put stuff in there to make it taste good, not to make it healthy. So just understand that from a business aspect, you know, hey, it's business. And they're not in the in the health business. They're in the, you know, selling food business. So they're not going to – their, their focus is to sell food to make money. So understand that. Secondly – so once you understand that, maybe cut it out. If you go seven days a week, cut it down to three. Every other day, you know, every whatever. And then you can eventually cut it out. Uh, okay, so you want to get, you know, some fiber in your diet. You know, get get some fruits uh, and some vegetables. I love broccoli, but I like it with butter. Listen, broccoli with butter is better than McDonald's. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> even if it's even if it's the GMO uh, 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 <laughs> broccoli, it's still better than that, right? So, and if you put butter on it, look, you, get get yourself started, get acclimated. Don't worry about uh, I I gotta go like go from go from uh, you know eating McDonald's to eating uh, you know kale or something like that. Like, first of all, I don't like kale. It tastes like to me. I I tried it every single way I could possibly try it. And I don't like it. And listen, don't eat nothing you don't like. If you don't like it, don't eat it. But try to make it to where, you know, eat something healthy, though. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be kale, but it could be whatever, right? So start doing that. Get in the get in the building. You don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, go to the dance. You don't necessarily have to dance, but just go to the dance, right? <laughs> so get in the building. Um, start thinking you know uh you know put your mind in 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 uh in situations or put your mind in a frame that you want to start eating healthy cut the starbucks out cut, you know if you don't do it cold turkey every other day if you go here you, you get the frappuccino with 100 pounds of sugar get something less sugary or get a smaller uh cup of it or whatever like figure that out get in the building uh, what else? Um, so what I, what I also do, I'm incorporating old school, with, which is the gym, to a, some of the new school stuff. Now, I don't know exactly how new school it is, but it's something that uh, is worth a try because 
Again, I started right around 222. Let me try to keep this sun out of the thing. I started around 222. I woke up this morning, I was 213, right? Now, along the way, doing the old school stuff, right? Um, in the gym, um, kind of focusing on the diet, eating better, right? Um, got the water. Okay, so now we we, we want to constantly improve, right? We want to constantly get our mind improving, which will improve the body. It starts with the mind. So intermittent fasting. Now, I have uh, done keto in the past. Now, I don't, and, and when you do keto, there's this thing called uh, fat adapted. Right, so when you when you do keto, you cut all the carbs out. You force your body to use fat for fuel. Now you go through this flu and you go through all this other stuff to get there. Once you get there, what I don't know is how long your body is affected by that. So how long does it continue to be adapted? And once it gets adapted, is it easier for future adaptation? I don't know. But what I can tell you is this. Um, 222. I'll try to keep the sun out of here. 222. Today I was 213. I just started doing intermittent fasting. So the reason why I started to do the intermittent fasting was because I was sick. And I had seasonal asthma. I had bronchitis, stuff like that. So I got to be careful, especially around the winter months. Because uh, my chest has mucus and all that kind of stuff, right? So I drink a lot of water, you know, stuff like that. So I was getting over the cold or whatever it was. And then I woke up one morning and I had massive, like, stomach bloating or whatever, right? So I was like, you know, referencing on the stuff I've done in the past in terms of fitness. I said, you know what? Let me try to fast because I've done keto and I've done fasting, right? Let me try to fast and see if it won't help this bloating. Now, what I also do during the time I was sick I mean, if you go back and look at my channel, I'm a proponent of apple cider vinegar. So for sore throats and, and, and like cold stuff and all that, I also uh, did this tea during that time, congestion, whatever, coughing, whatever. I did this tea where I chopped up, took a lemon, chopped it up in, in slices, and then put that in some water, boiled that, put some honey in it, stirred it around, made it like a tannish looking, tea looking color, and then drunk that. It was soothing, right? So well, after I did the night, I did that. Woke up the next morning, I was I felt better, but I had this big bloat and nausea feeling in my stomach. So I said, you know, I'm a fast. So I did. The last time I ate was like 12 o'clock that night. Woke up, um, and then felt that, and then throughout the day until like oh, maybe about eight o'clock at night and eat nothing. And then when I started to eat, I topped up an apple, put some salt on it because I had, hadn't had eaten nothing all day. I think I might have drank some black coffee, but I didn't really eat at all. Well, actually, I didn't eat anything at all. And I just drunk and I had some, uh, some of that. Uh, did I drink that tea? I might have had some of that tea with the honey in it. So I don't, I don't remember, but I, I know for sure I had some apple cider vinegar and I, I, I put uh, heated it up. Put a little capful in there and drank that. Get, gave it a little bit of a apple cider vinegar taste. Not really a whole lot, but you know, just in a like a regular coffee cup. And so uh, did so at the, that evening. I chopped up an apple, put some salt on it, and ate that, and I felt pretty good. So then the following day, um, and actually before I ate, the bloating kind of went away, the nausea kind of went away. So I went twelve o'clock midnight all until like you know, seven, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. So roughly about 20 hour, 18, 20 hour fast, something like that. And it kind of got rid, got rid of a lot of the bloating, uh, about 95% of the nausea woke up the next morning, felt way better. So, um, what that kind of triggered though, I said, you know what, why don't we, cause I wasn't going to the gym cause I was sick. So I said, why don't we, Excuse me. Why don't I try to incorporate that on a daily basis? Excuse me. So I said, you know what? Let's continue with the fasting. So I ate that. And then like by 11, 12 o'clock, I was done eating. 
next morning i said well we're gonna do 16 hours so i think it was two o'clock the next day i didn't eat and then i ate something and i don't remember what i ate probably ate some junk and some you know uh i started out with something light and then you know ate a little bit of you know some chocolates or whatever because i was kind of craving stuff and then you know um woke up the following morning drop a couple pounds by like 218 216 or something like 218 something like that it'd been you know it's like a couple of days whatever because i you know again i got i was sick so I, I i during the sickness i was probably dropped a couple pounds and then did the fasting maybe dropped another pound or two and then um after like a day or two uh i think i think yesterday morning i was around 216 or something like that so been feeling better the last few days last couple of few days right so yesterday um i did i stopped at 12 midnight uh stopped eating at 11 or 12 minutes something like that i didn't eat yesterday until 4 p.m and then i ate what did i eat um i broke the fast with like some cheese and then i had a snack or two and then i ate some hot dogs in a i didn't have any bread so i ate the hot dogs in a corn tortilla just to eat something and i was full actually right and then i had you know some little snack like a, a couple of little chocolates whatever not really a whole lot of calories black coffee all day water all day so woke up this morning and i was 213 so that's what i'm saying so like to get started get in the building you don't have to you know r jump off the cliff and say hey i'm eating salads and that's all we eat i mean you know slowly work to that like again i ate some chocolates i ate a hot dog um in a corn tortilla <laughs> i guess i don't have any bread right because i'm trying to get away from bread and i you know uh if you like old if you go old school like arnold Schwarzenegger, tell you don't eat bread and butt biscuits and all that so we're gonna try to get away from that. So I didn't have any bread. I asked for court tortillas though. Um, and it still kind of worked like a little bit. So especially in the beginning, like you're you're clearing a bunch of stuff out. You you know you you know you got extra pounds. Some of it's water, some of it's fat. So you're gonna lose. And I'm like almost no matter what you eat, you're gonna lose if you do the intermittent fasting. So. <coughs> I'm still kind of, you know, 97, 95, 97 percent over. I still have a little scratchy throat. Still got a little bit of a cough. I still got, you know, sometimes throughout the day I might have, you know, a little mucus pop up, whatever. And it, you know, it's clearing out. But I'm not drinking, you know, uh, cream in the coffee. I'm drinking black coffee, which you know. It, taste wise you gotta kind of get used to it but if you make the commitment get in the building and say hey either i'm gonna drink this black coffee or i'm not gonna drink nothing so if you if you if you're like for example it's uh it was 30 it's 36 degrees right now do i want to drink cold water no i drink room temperature water but room temperature is 37 degrees right so it's still gonna be a little cold if you want something hot to drink and you don't have any choices drink the black coffee it's, I mean, it's actually it's better for you in terms of uh, insulin and all that. So, you know, all this gets kind of technical too, like with the fasting stuff, because when you fast, you drop your um, your insulin levels, and in order for you to lo burn fat, you got your insulin le levels have to be low or lower. I don't know exactly if you spike them, this and that, as a stop exactly, but good rule of thumb is. If you don't have any insulin, you know, in in your system, and you give it time, so like last night, I stopped at eight o'clock now, and I had I went to sleep at probably around nine, woke up at four, so I got eight hours to tw I mean, excuse me, four hours to twelve. That's four hours, right? And then I got another four hours from twelve to four a.m. I got out of bed around uh, four thirty, so I went and worked out all that. It's eight o'clock right now. So I actually fasting, I got uh, 12 hours already at eight o'clock in the morning. I got 12 hours already. I stopped last night at eight. I got 12 hours of fasting already. 
at 8 o'clock in the morning. So if I go to 12, um, I, no, I got, tw no, what I said, I said eight, no, I got 12 hours of fasting at 8 a.m. If I go till noon, that's 16 hours. I can last till noon. I'm drinking, I'm drinking black coffee. Black coffee is, it, it's, it's a hydrating and dehydrating action. And let me explain that. It's got a lot of water, right? But it's got a diuretic in it too. Like it's like it's it's I think it hydrates you more than it dehydrates you all, but you know, again, that's I'm not a scientist, but I you know, I read somewhere coffee can be hydrating, at least at first, and then later on it may dehydrate you. I don't know, but I know that when I drink black coffee, I gotta go. That's all I know. So it's cool. Like if you drink it, it's flushing coffee's better for you depending on what kind of coffee you drink but coffee's i mean in terms of weight loss and stuff it's coffee black coffee is better than coffee with the creamer now you got you know the bulletproof coffee all that stuff you know we're not gonna get into that you know that's keto stuff and who knows but um if if you can uh stand it drink the black coffee it's gonna take you a while to get used to the taste once you get used to the taste, you'll be fine. And then if you make the commitment to say, I'm not drinking no more sugary stuff, you especially don't want to do it before you wake out or work out because, um, you know, you burn in whatever. And then if your insulin's low, you're more likely to burn fat um, than if your insulin is high. What also happens is that some of that bloating uh, from our research is insulin resistant. So when you give your pancreas, which produces the insulin, if you give it a break, you give your system a break, you know, your digestive system a break, you know, when you're sleeping overnight, you stop eating at eight and then you're sleeping or whatever. You get up at, you get up at four, like I did. That's eight hours, right? You, you got, you've given your, your body several hours now it does take time from eight o'clock to whenever it finished digesting um and i don't know how long that is but it you know at least you're not putting nothing in your body and your body's doing its work you're going to sleep whatever um and it you know it's doing it's doing its thing in there and like you get up in the morning you should be ready to go sit on the toilet right so but in terms of a from a pancreas standpoint who knows how long it takes for your insulin levels to drop and your pancreas to stop working who knows how long that takes but you've got a head start to the day if you wake up and you already got eight hours under your system or under your belt or or whatever it's like eight o'clock in the morning i got 12 hours under my belt so my insulin levels are probably low now should you jump off the cliff and start going to the gym on an empty stomach and all of that and you know no you're you're gonna have to get used to it but get in the building if you if you go to that planet Fit, like whatever gym you go to if you go and to the gym and you're only in there 15 20 minutes at least you were there Ex improvement stay 30 commit to 30 you know if you started at 15 tomorrow go 20 next day go 25 go 30 whatever or do that for a couple of days you know get into the action of going and then it'll get things will get easier and easier don't put yourself on a time don't say i'm gonna lose 30 pounds in 30 days that's that's listen that that very seldom works especially if you've been sedentary for a long time you're gonna get sore you're gonna do all that so don't do that give you give yourself a year say i'm gonna start this year and this time next year i'm gonna have the body i want That'll give you plenty of time in terms of your mind frame to get it together. Will it take a year? Probably not if you commit. But if you say, hey, I'm going to give myself a year and I'm going to commit to doing this. You also have to commit, hey, if, if something happens and you weren't able to go to the gym, try to find it somewhere in the day. If it's after work, it's before work, it's at lunchtime, whatever. If you can't get to the gym, do some push-ups, do something, some squats or something to say I did something gym-related today, even if you can't go, right? It's just a, it's a mind thing. Get in the building. It's a mind thing. Um, so, uh, so we, you know, so now we're doing the intermittent fasting. I have a little bit of uh, familiarity with the keto stuff, so it could be this because it, it hasn't been hard, right? It hasn't been hard. Could be. 
because of my past keto stuff. I don't know. Uh, but it's been, it, it hasn't been hard. I just want to say that. Um, I'm also doing stuff on the computer, some computer work. So, um, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not focused on driving, you know, I think driving for me is kind of like a trigger for snacks. You know, you get bored, whatever, you watch TV, whatever, but I'm doing some mental stuff cause I'm working on, you know, some social media work. I'm working on my channel. I'm working on a bunch of stuff and it's, it's, um, uh, thought intensive, right? It's uh, problem solving, uh, you know, stuff like that. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. You know, it could be like, you know, it's like kind of like if, you know, if you're, uh, sitting somewhere and you're waiting and time's moving slow and you know, whatever. But if you're doing something, time goes by fast. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I don't know, but it's working, whatever it is. So find something that works for you. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making progress and I got before pictures, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then when I get you know, I'm at 2.13 this morning, as of this morning, I'm at 2.13. I probably need to be around 200, 195-ish to really look um, like I want to look, right? So when I get there, when, uh, I'm going to post a picture. And then we're going to go back, and then we're going to do, I'll show you each individual thing that I did. Um, to get there. This is just the introduction to the new start. I've started plenty of times. I think this time is going to be different though, because we're attacking. I, I've done a lot of starting and stopping to the point where I think I got the starting and stopping down by now <laughs> and that we're not, um, you know, going to be doing, uh, uh, stopping anymore. So, and look, a lot of, a lot of food related or food related issues are uh habit forming and they're addictive right <coughs> sugar is addictive that's one of the most addictive things on the planet sugar nicotine you know crack cocaine <laughs> all that stuff is addictive I, I heard something where some uh, something about Oreos were more addictive than, than cocaine. I don't know if it's crack cocaine or powder cocaine, but it's more addictive than, than, than drugs. Um, and you know some of the same same sensor sensory stuff <clears throat> that goes on in your brain, <clears throat> uh, dopamine stuff like that, <clears throat> is the same stuff that goes on when you do drugs, right? So. That's why you can have a 600 pound life. That is um, emotional eating. So for example, if you talk to a drug addict and you ask them, why do you do drugs? Well, I do drugs to ease the pain, you know, pain of whatever happened in your life. But, but um, in the brain, what happens, it's, it's not necessarily the actual drug that you induce, whether it be, you know, opiates and pills and heroin and cocaine, all that. It's not the actual drug itself, but what it does to your brain to induce the, the dopamine chemical to say that this is good, right? Um, and that's exactly what happens with food on a probably lower level, I'm sure. But over time, um, it's the same thing. So <clears throat> if you're not in, like, you're not, like, I don't, I mean, addiction is addiction. And whether it's a, <clears throat> a sexual addiction, whether it's a, uh, a, a, a drug addiction, whether it's a food addiction, it's a gambling addiction. It's all an addiction and you get, your brain gets addicted to the good feeling that that is. So, you could uh, actually, you could actually be addicted to, uh, you know, working out and fitness and stuff like that. There are, are um, cases where that's the case. Like, you know, that, you know, you start doing stuff, you know, you, you know, it's, it's not necessarily, maybe not necessarily a feeling, but a look, like if you look in the mirror, Hey, uh, you know, um, I think they call it body dysmorphia. Hey, I, you know, I don't look good. Well, I'm going to inject this and do, you know, it's cosmetic, sir. All that's all that stuff is addicting, but, 
<laughs> what was that? But um, <clears throat> if you can use your addiction for good, if if, that, if if you can even do that, you know, use it for good. Like, you know, be addicted to going to, if you're going to be addicted, being addicted to improving your body. Like not in a, like a, a necessarily in a generic addictive sense, but like, you know, get addicted to improvement, right? I think I, I, I'm trying to see if that's a, if that could actually be a good thing. You know, I mean, at least if you have an addictive personality, be addicted to self-improvement, not jump off the thing with the Botox and the steroids and all that, not that, but be addicted to, hey, I'm going to commit to myself. Be addicted to making a commitment to yourself. Like, you, use that to, you know, make an improvement. You, you know, I, maybe I'm not saying it right, but, you know, do that. <laughs> get in the building. Make a commitment. Like, be addicted to making a commitment to getting in the building. How about that? Um, and so, what else? Uh, that's pretty much it. So, um, that's the the nuts and bolts of it, right? You have to first make a commitment and then start to make improvements um, on once you get in, you know, once you get inside of the building make, of your commitment, then you have to make the improvements. Go, you know, start eating better. Change your diet. You know, if it's cutting out, uh, if you drink Diet Cokes, Diet Cokes every day, change that you know, skip one. Like if you're going to do a diet Coke, do some black coffee because diet Coke don't have any calories, but I mean, they clean toilets with <laughs> diet Coke. So, you know, you see it on TikTok where you clean the toilet with the, with, with the soda and all that change it, you know, skip one. If you, instead of reaching for a diet Coke, reach for a black coffee. If you know, if you absolutely hate it, you know, try to force yourself. Say, I make a commitment to, I'm not drinking other than this black coffee, even though I hate it. I'm going to figure out how to drink it. Um, or water. The water's boring. Everybody knows that. Don't put the additives in there. Just drink the water just like that. Because um, then they might as well get a Diet Coke. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, like, just, you know, just be, and be honest with yourself. Don't say, because uh, you, you're not cheating anyone other than yourself. If you don't go to the gym today, you let yourself down. You didn't let nobody else down. You let yourself down. Don't get caught up in the, you know, uh, 90 pounds and 90 days stuff. Um, but, you know, make the commitment to say, hey, we're going to make this commitment and we're going and, and to hold, we are going to hold ourselves to it. Because you're not letting anyone down but yourself if you don't. So, don't let yourself down. I mean, look, how do you feel like when, let's say you have a flat tire and you break down on the side of the road and you call somebody and say, okay, I'm on my way. And an hour later, they're still not there. How do you feel? Calling them, hey, uh, oh, my clothes are in the dryer. Okay. Don't you feel so or, or Or they just don't never just show up, right? They let you down. How do you feel? You get angry, right? You get angry at them. Because for not for saying they're gonna do something and don't do it, you get angry, right? Right. But when we do it to ourselves, we give ourselves a pass. Mm -mm. Don't give yourself a pass. Be as angry at yourself as you would be as if somebody else let you down. Then, 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 um. Uh, you know, you'll be more honest with yourself and you'll be more likely to not let yourself down in the way that you don't want somebody else to let you down. Sometimes it's hard to look in the mirror, you know, and be honest with ourselves. I mean, I have a, I have a hard time doing it too. You know, I'm not, I'm not some special dude, right? But if you apply the expectations that you put on other people and you put them on yourselves then it makes it, two, it makes it two things. It makes it harder and it makes it easier. It makes it harder to hold someone else accountable for letting you down if you let yourself down. But then if you don't want to be that person who let you down, then it's easier to not let yourself down. I don't know if I talk to circles, but it's whatever. Like, you know, it's just a mental... Listen, it all starts with the mind 
it's mental. All this is mental. Because you have to think about it before you do it. You know, are there some stuff that you don't have to think about? It's about this. Yes. But in terms of making, you know, losing weight and be, being in shape, it starts with the mind. And then look, losing weight doesn't necessarily mean healthy either. So I don't, I mean, I, you know, we, you know, don't get that twisted. I mean, because here's the thing. If you're in the gym, you're building muscle and, um, the scale is not moving. That doesn't mean that you don't look better in the mirror, right? So the weight loss isn't necessarily the end all be all because look, I mean, some of these bodybuilders are, two, you know, 250 plus pounds and you know, they're, they're shredded and they're you know, lean and all that stuff, but you can have 250 pounds of blubber too. So it, it, it uh, weight doesn't necessarily mean anything. So if you like, if you got a gut like I got, like start, I started with 220, 220 pounds, which is a lot of gut in there, and then you're but you're losing weight, then you can look. Especially at first, you can kind of look at the scale and like, okay, we're making progress, we're not making progress, what's going on? Uh, but at some point, that scale is gonna you're gonna throw it out the window because now you're looking at the mirror. So just keep that in mind. So I know I rambled on and on and on and on, but this is the first. This is the you know the first video we're gonna do to the to the journey back we not going to get off this time because situations are different we're doing stuff differently i'm more conscious about getting injured which was some of the issues in the past i'm 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 52 right so i'm not 22 so <laughs> so that's why i said like you know the older you are the more you have to ease your way into the gym like i'm doing like i'm doing like i still have shoulder pains but do lighten it up you know we not necessarily go heavy today if we start to get heavy or whatever we lighten it up so you know what i'm saying like and then you're not doing as many reps when i, when I like i felt like I, I i tore my rotator cuff doing too many push-ups because it's a lot of reps we, when you get in there in the gym in the, in the gym which is why i'm a more proponent of the gym now is you don't have to do as many reps because you have more weights so in the beginning not necessarily you can do slower reps or whatever but you know ultimately you know I'm I'm no longer necessarily a no gym guy. I mean, if you just like if you're broke and you have nothing else and whatever, I mean, what else can you do? But um, if you can get to the gym, get to the gym. Don't let time be a factor. Now, look, I know you people got kids, whatever kind. Of, yeah. So if you have to build a gym at home, you got to get some dumbbells. You got to get, you know, get a bucket and fill it with water, put a bag around it like we used to do in a penitentiary and, you know, do some, you know, do some stuff like that. You know, figure out a system, you know, to put some weights on something. So because that weights lower the reps. Now you can do again, you can do, you know, body, system, but at some point it's not going to be it's not going to. You know, it's not gonna really do nothing. You gotta put weights on there sometime, some at somewhere, shape or form, at some point. So, and oh, and if you're a woman, listen. Uh, first of all, if you ask any body woman bodybuilder how hard it is to build muscle, they're gonna tell you it's, it's extremely hard for a woman, right? So, I, you know, I, I get like, um, you know, when I talk to women in, in exercise and stuff like that, oh, I don't want to go in and do that or this because I'm going to look like I'm going to get muscle. Listen, listen, for men, it's even hard to get muscle. People, you know, men go to gym for years and years and don't don't gain muscle. It, it's not just a function of, put, you know, putting a weight on a bar and, and doing that that's going to build muscle because, you know, a lot of people don't even do it right to build muscle you don't i mean because it's diet and exercise and a lot of other stuff that, that that that's involved with building muscle so don't worry about that in other words what i'm trying to say don't worry about getting on here and, and getting on some dumbbells and i don't want to do this because it's going to uh, build some muscle it's going to burn calories and and if you build a little muscle in there that's fine um but don't think they're going to come out looking like a bodybuilder because they got bodybuilders that can't even build muscle right it's a lot of time. That's why they take steroids, you know, or whatever. But don't worry about that. Just go in there and get it. And if you come down looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, you, you could take a couple of days off from the gym. How about that? <laughs> so with that, 
it was a long video, um, but you know, look, we just explained where we at and what we're gonna do moving forward. You probably don't get another video 50 minutes, something minutes long in the future. It's gonna be really short and concise, but I just wanted to kick this off with an explanation with a decent explanation to get, get give you an idea of where we're at and where we're going. So with that, um, let's get on this fitness journey together. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to try to do this daily, but we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> so take care of yourself. Get in that gym. Get in that gym. And if you can't get in the gym, get in the building, whether it be intermittent fasting, changing your diet, whatever, start there. Start somewhere. Get in the building. Okay? <laughs> so, we're going to talk to you again soon. And remember, this the Hood Trucker Fitness. And our motto for 2024, get in the building.